Hey guys, I've decided to take one of the new features in DaVinci Resolve 18 and show you guys how to create some crazy bouquet in the background of your scene. Even if you don't have one of the world's most expensive lenses on your camera, we can create it in post with DaVinci Resolve 18 now using the new depth map feature. And I do wanna warn you for this example particularly, I'm gonna use a studio only node and there's other ways to do this. You can use the free version nodes, but it was just so simple to use one of the studio only nodes. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So I got my inspiration for this tutorial from Matt Reeves, the director, and Greg Frazier, the DP on the wonderful new film, The Batman. And there's so many great scenes in this film, but I'm gonna show you how Reeves and Frazier use this enhanced crazy bouquet effect to not only highlight the depth of the scene, but to also make the heroes in the scenes our focal point as we move through the action. A side benefit of this bouquet is the background. When we're doing VFX, it hides a lot of things, so that really makes it a lot easier to manage some of these scenes when a lot of things are happening. So that's where I'm gonna jump right in. And I've got a couple of clips. I got these off of pixels.com. And the link for these clips is in the description if you wanna follow along. Got some really cool shots. And you can see there's some blur in these backgrounds of these shots. They're shot pretty well with a good camera, but we are focusing in on our subject in both of these, similar to what was done in the Batman. So taking this shot, I'm gonna just open it in the Fusion page directly. And I've got my two windows open here. I'll make them just a little bit bigger so we can all see this. And here's the media in. I'm gonna hit shift space bar and I'm gonna type in depth. And I want this new depth map that was added in Resolve 18. You can see my media in clip is going right into that. So on the left side, I'm going to open up the depth map I'm gonna turn this down to faster so we can move along a little bit quicker here. So you can see this is the depth map created from that node. And this is not a studio only node. It's built into the free version and studio version. So you can get this far for sure. And I wanna adjust the map levels. And we're going to create a little bit of change here. I wanna get this foreground as white as possible and the background as black as possible. And I can do that a number of different ways. If I turn that gamma down, it's gonna whiten this up a bit. And I'm gonna use a little bit of post-processing. I wanna reduce the size and I'm gonna blur the edge a little bit, smooth that out. And you can see his hair in the original scene was pretty crazy. So it's not gonna be perfectly straight. So that's what we're gonna get out of it. I think that is pretty good for now. That's probably too much blur. I'm gonna turn that down just a bit. Okay, so next, I'm just gonna click in the flow area here. I'm gonna hit shift space bar. This time I'm gonna hit tilt, type in tilt. So this is the studio only node I was talking about. It's a tilt shift blur node, and it's super handy, especially when it comes to this new depth map. The information that it gives goes into this node really nice. So what this node does, it is looking for an original source. And in this case, I'm going to use the media in. And let's go ahead and export that node out here. And then it's looking for some kind of a depth map. And we can use what's created from this depth map out to this tilt shift blur. And we need to make one change. You can see there's a map source and it's set on custom. Let me break this. I wanna go out to the media out from this tilt shift blur. Under the map source, we wanna go from second input, which would be that green input. You can see now it's starting to affect our image and now we need to make some adjustments. So let's go ahead and open the iris control on the camera. Here's our blur strength up here. Go to no blur, we can go up quite a bit. So we can get the background kind of where we want it. I like the look of that. And what I like to do is turn on this depth map preview. You can see what we're working for. So anything in black is going to be, basically it's not gonna apply the blur strength to that. Anything that's not black 
and particularly whatever is white is going to be affected by this blur. So what we want to do is change the focus sweep. We're going to turn that up a little bit and start adjusting the range. Get it where we want it. Turn that off. And so that's our image that we're going to see now. So I'm going to continue to make some adjustments to this image. And then here's what it looks like in the end, just with those two nodes. Really simple to do. And all these settings, you can see I can animate these. So if I really wanted to produce some high quality stuff, I could go in here and set key points. And based on where his position is in the scene, I can make those adjustments as needed. Okay, jumping over to the second scene, it's just really the same thing. Select the clip, go to the fusion page. I need the two nodes, the depth map. And I need the tilt shift blur. Media in goes into the yellow connector and the depth map goes into the green connector. And make some setting adjustments. Place that into the media out. And go to your tilt shift blur. Change the map source to second input. I've got the depth map preview checked so I can see what it's going to look like here, what this is affecting. Make my adjustments, turn off this preview, and set the lens iris the way I want it, and the blur strength as well. You get pretty crazy with this blur strength, as you can see. And I'm going to continue to make some adjustments. And here is the final clip. You can see how powerful this new depth map node is. And you can apply different blurs to it. Uh, there's other ways to do this. But the great thing about that tilt shift blur is it has the depth map input, which that map obviously is outputting. So it's just a natural fit. And there's other ways to do that, like I said, but this is the way I wanted to show you today. And you can create some really incredible bouquet in your backgrounds just using these two plugins. Hopefully that helped you guys out. I appreciate your time today, guys. And take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you could. That'd be great. Take care, everybody.